How about we talk about fraction division or complex fractions? Let's say you have a problem like this, 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth. Let's rewrite it like this because we don't use this old fashioned division sign anymore. And you end up with this, 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth. Because any fraction is in itself a division problem. So that's why this is complex because we've got a, two division problems together in a division problem. That's the definition of a complex fraction, is a fraction that has one or more fractions in it, like one in the numerator or the denominator or both, as in this one. So any fraction asks a question. The question starts at the bottom, and it goes like this. How many of these fit in here? That's the question every fraction asks, okay? So the bottom is the, it's a bottom to top question. If you always remember that when you see a fraction, it can help you keep things simple. I'm gonna take you on a little sidebar over here. To help understand complex fractions, we need to make sure we understand simple fractions and what's going on. So let's say we have a simple fraction like this. And so how many fours fit into three? It's a bottom to top question. How many of these fit into this? Well, the fraction is both the answer and the question. Simple fraction is the question and the answer. Ooh, that is deep. It's all one. In other words, three-fourths of a four fit into three. So we don't need to do anything with that. But, however, if we want to convert this to a decimal so we can do other things with it, with your calculator, you would go top divided by bottom. You would literally hit these buttons on your calculator, and you would get that answer. Okay, But a simple fraction really is the question and the answer. How many fours fit into three? The answer is three-fourths of a four fit into three. Okay, if we want to go longhand, old school with this, use long division, which some of our common, one of our common core standards has you do this, no calculator. So you need to know that it's top divided by bottom, or in this case, three divided by four. When the bottom is bigger than the top, as it is in most of these fractions, we want to add a decimal and throw a few zeros out there. Bring the decimal up. <clears throat> Taking you back to third or fourth grade with this one. But there we go. Okay, we have no, uh, no remainder. That's our answer. And you see it gets us our same answer as the calculator. So, <clears throat> if we keep this concept in mind, let's throw this off to the side. Now that we're masters of the simple fraction, let's go back to the complex fraction and see if we can just do the same thing. Okay? So, we want to change it into a simple fraction, right? Because we know how to do that. That's the solution. So in order to do that, we need to get the denominator to equal 1, right? Because if the denominator equals 1, then we have a simple fraction. So to do this, I need to uh, find the reciprocal of 1 eighth. Why? Because that's the multiplicative inverse reciprocal is when you have two numbers whose product is one quick and easy way to get a reciprocal or a multiplicative inverse is just to flip the fraction over. So in this case, the 
If we flip it, we get 8 on top of 8, which reduces how many 8s fit into 8. The answer is 1. Okay? So, now that we have the reciprocal of the denominator, let's change this complex fraction into a simple fraction. We need to multiply both the top and the bottom by that multiplicative inverse of the denom denominator. Why is that? Because any number on top of itself is 1. We learned the giant 1 method in my class. But you can see that how many of these fit into that? 1, just like we showed up here. So this is perfectly legal and OK to do. You can do this any time. You can multiply anything, top and bottom, by the same thing on top of itself, okay? Because what happens down here is we get 8 on top of 8, which we already know is 1. Up here we have 24 on top of 4. How many 1's? This is 1. This becomes 1. So I'm running out of room, but the bottom line here is we've just changed this complex fraction into this simple fraction. Ta-da! Now the question is how many 4's fit into 24? 6! Wow! This crazy complex fraction had a very simple answer. 6. <sighs> now I'm going to go to another page. I hope you got all that. Let's show this with a rectangle model. Sometimes seeing a picture can help. So back to our original problem. If I show a model, here's a model of 3 fourths. Now if I take half of 3 fourths, this is how I get an equivalent fraction. That's 6 eighths, so it's the same thing. But now that I have eighths, I can ask how many one eighths are in there? And you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. That proves our work from the other page. And now I'm going to summarize by showing you a shortcut. We all love shortcuts. You earned it. You sat through seven minutes, almost eight minutes of a video. You deserve a shortcut. Here it is. <sighs> when dividing fractions, I'm writing as fast as I can, and hopefully you can still read it. All you do is multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Woo! Woo! That's it. And the proof is on the other page. So for example, if you have this problem, 2 thirds divided by 1 half, all we do is change it to a multiplication problem. 2 thirds times 2 over 1, right? Reciprocal is right there. Then we multiply straight across. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. There's the answer. We could change it to a mixed number. Bam! There we go. Hope you took good notes. Please check out video number 2, which will have some practice problems all worked out for you. Ciao!